Democratic presidential candidate RFK Jr. had some interesting remarks about potential government conspiracies involved in deaths in his own family, making these remarks on Sean Hannity's show the other night. Let's watch. The day that my uncle was killed, I was picked up at Sidwell Friends School and brought home the first phone call that my father made after J. Edgar Hoover told him that his brother had been shot was to the CIA desk officer in Langley, who was only a mile from our house. Yeah. And, and, and my father said to him, did your people do this? His next call was to Harry Ruiz, who was one of the Cuban uh, Bay of Pigs leaders who had remained very, very close to our family and to my father. My father asked him the same question. Then my father called John McComb, who was the head of the CIA, and asked him to come to the house. McComb came over, and when I came home from Sidwell Friends School, my father was walking in the yard with John McComb, and my father was posing the same question to him. Was it our people oh. who did this to my brother? So it was my father's first instinct that the well, agency had killed his brother. We could spend a whole... That is a fascinating escalation of some statements he's been making recently, speaking specifically to his personal experience of, of seeing his father kind of react and process to the news of his brother's assassination. Certainly lends, in my eyes, some credibility to this argument that he's been making. How do you think this is going to go over? Certainly. Uh, the idea that that would be the first thought of his father, of Bobby Kennedy, you know, given and Bobby Kennedy's own um, proximity to top law enforcement, national security, intelligence, spy people, the knowledge he would have had about what organizations, government organizations like the CIA had done in other countries would give him, would make him think, oh, is this them at work? Absolutely should raise questions and should make people more concerned about the potential involvement or a potential cover-up. Look, this is why it was a very, um, look, it was something that a lot of Americans were very unsure about for decades right. and to this day continue to be. And I, I don't think anyone is satisfied with exactly how long the government has kept hidden mm -hmm. some of these files that, you know, they're the ones always saying, if you've, if you've done nothing wrong, you have nothing to hide. Well, why doesn't that apply to them? Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And look, so I dug up, there was an old um, interview with Evan Thomas, who was an RFK senior biographer with ABC News. And this is how Thomas described Robert Kennedy Sr. receiving the news of his brother's death. He said, Robert Kennedy is sitting by his pool. It's a warm day, warm November day, and he's sitting by his pool at Hickory Hill. He's having a conference about organized crime, actually, and the phone rings somewhere in his house, I think, but there's a poolside phone as well. And he picks it up, and it's J. Edgar Hoover telling him, the director of the FBI, telling Robert Kennedy, the attorney general, that JFK has been shot in Dallas. Bobby Kennedy later recalled that Hoover had no more emotion in his voice than if he was telling him that they just discovered a communist on the faculty of Howard University in Washington. In other words, there was no grief. Yeah, I'm going to put that shade to the side. In other words, there was no grief, no sympathy. There was no inflection of surprise. Just in a flat voice, the director of the FBI told Bobby Kennedy that his brother had been shot. He wasn't dead yet, but just shot. Bobby, of course, was stunned. He put his hand up over his eyes, told the others there that his brother had been shot. Ethel came over and put her arms around him, and obviously he was in a state of near shock. Although pretty quickly, even after he finds out his brother is dead, he gets on the phone and he starts trying to find out who killed his brother. He goes on to say, Robert Kennedy had a fear that he had somehow gotten his own brother killed, that Robert Kennedy's attempts to prosecute the mob and to kill Castro had backfired in some in a terrible way, had blown back, as the intelligence folks say. And in fact, he said to Ed Guthman, Robert Kennedy said to Ed Guthman, the spokesperson, as they walked along that afternoon, right after he was killed, that there'd been so much hate, I thought they'd get me. So, like, there are these contemporaneous accounts now. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that... Uh, J. Edgar Hoover not showing emotion is such <laughs> a this positive? This positive thing. Uh, was he a famously uh, <laughs> a cried at the drop of a hat? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, but it, it is, it, there is a reason why there is so much kind of cultural investment in what happened that day. There were too many incentives by people all across the political spectrum, as we've discussed, mm -hmm. to want to end that presidency, to want to end the kind of 
grip that that well, family had over the immediate murder American of the politics. killer made it so that it would Absolutely. seem very suspicious because it was objectively suspicious yeah. to you know to everyone. Yeah. And, and Jack Ruby had was rumored to have potential organized crime connections, or at least to have known people who would have been in organized crime. The the crackdown on the mafia is genuinely true. Um, the ties between Harvey Oswald and uh, the Cuban ties are, are real. They're not made up. They're not it, it, like all of that raises the the specter of involvement of those groups. And mm-hmm. then we, we know, as RFK Jr. again, I'll say, as RFK Jr. or as RFK knew and RFK Jr. observed that. The U.S. government does shady things, Yeah, has, did shady things at that time, has continued to do shady things to this day. One of Trump's best moments was when uh, he was asked about, I think, uh, uh, Putin interfering in re- elections. It says, oh, we do some nasty stuff, too. We're not a lot of killers, in, Bill. A lot, of killers. a lot of killers, Bill. It's my favorite <laughs> Trump line of all time. Well, look, I, I think this is also playing a really interesting role in how RFK Jr. is being cast in the context of this election, because he very much is running as a Democrat and has, I am a Kennedy Democrat branded across his website materials, and yet has been embraced by independents and right-leaning people. I think because stories like this, his positioning in history, his family's positioning history in these ways, puts him at, in this adversarial position to the deep state and obviously influential parts of our government, despite superficially running well within the warm embrace of the Democratic Party and his family, not him, obviously. And so it's there's a way that these kind of stories help to um, co- concretize his outsider status, rightly or wrongly. And I wonder if that's part of why there's this em- em- emphasis on, on this aspect of his own history at this time, even though obviously it has very little to do with contemporary policy debates. Well, and of course— the persecution that many conservatives and Republicans feel at the hands of national security type people, you know, the deep state, that's very palpable. That animates a lot of conservative media, a lot of viewers of conservative media. It's animating some level of of policy activity on Capitol Hill, the weaponization of the federal government hearings, the Twitter files, all of that stuff. You know, that's a major, uh, among conservatives who are tuned in enough to be watching Sean Hannity's show, that's something that they're interested in. Uh, at, At some point in the last, like, 20 years, Republicans became the more conservatives, became the more skeptical movement, skeptical of everything. Mm. They used to just be skeptical of universities and the education system and like the media, but they weren't skeptical of the CIA. They mm-hmm. weren't skeptical of, of, of the generals. Now they're skeptical of every institution there is. I was reading a fascinating poll. We actually could have done a whole separate thing on this. Fascinating poll the other day, you probably saw this, of uh, trust in specific media institutions among Democrats and Republicans. And people were joking. It was funny that there was more Democrats had more trust in several conservative outlets, Mm -hmm. National Review, The Washington Examiner, a few others, than Republicans did. And people were saying, isn't that interesting that Democrats trust National Review more than Republicans do? But they're getting that wrong because what that poll is picking up on is that Democrats are more trusting Period. Of They're any, more trusting of anything. Yeah. So any list of things is going to show more trust among Democrats than among Republicans. Republicans are the group that does not yeah. have trust. Democrats and, are institutionalists through and through. Yes. And our, so RFK Jr. is actually uh, the perfect person to t- uh, to tap into that distrust of institutions, given his you know the things he said about various COVID subjects and also his own family's history. Yeah. You know, okay. rightly or wrongly, have, with with the institutions have anything to do with it, and you know maybe they didn't. I don't. I'm not particularly persuaded that they did. Yeah. But uh, that's why it's he's going to be making a very interesting splash in the conservative media ecosystem. Yeah, for sure. And we'll see how the liberal media institution <laughs> uh, continues to treat him. A lot more rising right after this. 